Well, The Many Saints of Newark is finally out on DVD and Blu-ray, and with that comes behind-the-scenes features. One of these is of course the deleted scenes of the film. Now, we've known for a while that there were several scenes that were left out of the final version, because the trailer shows some shots that never made it in. And while we still have no idea if a director's cut is coming or not, at least now we have some context on what those scenes were. This is going to be a short video, but I just thought I would go through those scenes for those that haven't seen them, as well as give background on how they relate to the film and the show in general. Now, I don't actually own the Blu-ray myself, as Paulie broke my last Blu-ray player with his Brogan adjustment. Maybe Brendan Flone could hook me up after his eye exam. But luckily, the Many Saints Club posted the scenes on YouTube. I'll link to their video, go check it out for yourself. I'm not sure if there are any other scenes included in the Blu-ray that are not shown here. If you have a copy, let me know and I might bite the bullet and get one so I can review it here. Also included on in the Blu-ray is the behind the scenes featurette. There's nothing we haven't already heard on there before, although there is this little bit of irony. You have to bring some essence of that character, and so finding that essence and paying homage to the performances that came before, and yet not just doing an impression. Truck's not gonna unload itself! But without further ado, let's get into the video. These are the many scenes of Newark's deleted scenes. The first scene we have is called Livia's Nightmare. In it, Livia is screaming in her sleep, waking up her family in the middle of the night. She's shouting about driving fast and teeth. Though Tony tries to wake her up gently, Johnny Boy is annoyed and roughly shakes her awake. She describes the dream as a nightmare, where she gets into a car accident and her teeth fall out. It's interesting that Tony also had dreams about car rides and about his teeth falling out. Janice says that dreams about teeth mean you said something bad to someone, and Johnny Boy points out the fight that Livia had with their neighbor over their dog. You'll remember, of course, that Livia always had a problem with dogs in the series, and she's the one who made Johnny Boy get rid of Tony's dog, Tippy. Afterwards, Johnny pushes Tony to the wall in the hallway. This is the scene from the trailer that didn't make it into the movie. He says that Tony shouldn't tell him to take it easy, as he has no idea how hard it is to take care of Livia. He says that Tony will have to do so one day, and we of course know how that goes. In this scene, we see how abusive Johnny Boy could be to both Tony and Livia. This is something Tony referenced in the show. If Carmelo let me kick AJ's ass like my father kicked my ass, he might have gone up with some balls. Like you. Yeah, like me. We'll touch more on Tony's relationship with his father in a later deleted scene, but his memory of the great man his father was is definitely warped, and he's chosen to forget a lot of the more unsavory details about their relationship. Next, we have Soprano Moving Day. In it, the family is getting ready to move from their original house that we saw in the episode Down Neck to the house that Livia actually lives in at the start of the series. The theme of moving from their old neighborhood with all the Italian culture to a more upscale and Americanized neighborhood is a theme that would be explored heavily throughout the show. Every Sunday, Italians from the old neighborhood, they drive miles to come here to pray. To keep this place alive. That's so how come we never do. As Livia and Johnny Boy call out for him, Tony has a panic attack and collapses to the floor. We actually hear from a young Barbara in this scene, who calmly tells her parents that Tony is having another one of his fits. Tony's first attack occurred when he was a child, and would continue throughout his adolescence whenever he got stressed out so his family would be aware of his condition at this point. It was odd that we never got to see a panic attack in the movie, given that it's the thing that jumpstarts the series, and a connection that Tony actually shared with his father. I should think your father. What is? That's the same thing. My old man had anxiety attacks? Well, in those days we called it a condition. The last scene we get is called Jukebox on the Arm. Dickie sees Johnny Boy and Tony drive up to his warehouse. He knows that Johnny wants a free jukebox from Dickie. Again, something we would see the bosses do throughout The Sopranos. I left my wallet in the car. I'll catch you next time. He also complains that Johnny is already rich because he just moved to West Orange, 
again referencing the previous deleted scene. Johnny Boy continues to be domineering to Tony, telling him to wait there and he will pick out the one that he wants. Tony then has a conversation with Dickie, where he tells him about a girl named Carmela that he made out with. Apparently, Carmela was going to be featured more prominently than the one scene we got in the movie, but that was scrapped. Afterwards, Tony complains about his father and says that he could kill him. Dickie then slaps Tony and tells him never to say that again. Dickie is of course upset because he actually killed his own father, Hollywood Dick, and is taking it out on Tony. That too is a behavior we saw all the time in The Sopranos. Tony and Dickie get into a fight until Johnny Boy breaks it up. Johnny says that Dickie is starting to remind him of Hollywood Dick, who also had a hair trigger. Dickie storms off, and Johnny again hits Tony for causing trouble. This scene adds more flavor to Dickie's downfall. After he kills his father, he becomes increasingly more erratic, and we see how it affects his relationship with the people around him, most especially Tony. And those are the deleted scenes, at least the ones we've seen so far. Again, I think many of these could have given the film more Sopranos flavor, and I'm hoping we may still get a director's cut with everything included. But there is something else I've wanted to talk about for some time, but never had the chance to. I figured I might as well throw it in here. There's been a lot of criticism for the film because of the focus on Harold and the African American characters. Some fans have complained that it doesn't fit with the original show. And while I do have many problems with the structure and the pacing of the film, the Newark riots and the African American experience is clearly something that Chase has been interested in for a long time. In 1988, Chase created a series called Almost Grown. It was sort of a precursor to This Is Us, as it was a show about different generations of a family across different timelines. It starred Tim Daly, who would later play J.T. Dolan on The Sopranos, and is how Chase knew him. Now, I haven't been able to find any video of the show online, except for most of one episode, which was posted to YouTube. Again, special thanks to OutThere85, and I'll link to his video. The episode is called Jersey Blues, and once you know it, it just so happens to be about the Newark riots. Let's take a look and see if we can make any connections. Some so-called spokesman for the colored community is predicting a riot in Newark, just like Los Angeles last month. What the fuck? That's Belmont Avenue. They burned down their own neighborhood. It's stupid. Now, I never realized exactly how prejudiced you are. You got your nerve. What is it, my fault? You're twice as likely to be robbed by a black? That is so fucking racist! It happens to be a fact! A front who, David Duke? They should riot. They should burn down Newark. What? What? Whites have been stealing Negroes blind for centuries. I never stole from a colored man in my life, not once. We don't break into their homes and steal their TV sets. Well, take music. This big, fat, white guy, Paul Whiteman, calls himself the king of jazz. He's the king of Swedish meatballs. What's this? Al Hurt. Trumpet. Sean Carson all the time. It's not jazz. Take it back. These two. Anyways, this was a simple little video I wanted to make. I hope you guys enjoyed the content, and be sure to be subscribed for more Sopranos videos coming soon. They also deleted my cameo appearance, by the way. Tommy Smith, Abdal Alamari, Russell, Sean, Heart of Markness, Broccoli, Logan, Clean, John Reyna, Jesse Sterling, Andrew Stewart, Ops Gracing Media, Daz J Kit, Conan Higgins, Irish Nachos, Sam Cedarlin, Don Lucania, and Celery Man.